We are recording. Okay, we're back in Seeker, chapter six. Uh, and we're going to carry on. Slash uh, checking editable places on spot. And uh, just quick catch up. We're now in the Trelasi system, and she is talking to a. Um, uh, what did we call it? I I referred to it as sort of like a passport control thing, but it's. Sen I think sentry bot. Is Se yeah, still, sentry bot. Is still a good umbrella term. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's carry on, and this is the robot. So, uh, records augmented, previous combat experience and enforcement role noted, temporary 65 kilosecond concession authorised. Disclaimer, you and your crew continue at your own risk and that no entity in this system can or will be held responsible for any loss or damage incurred while at a known red risk location. Your ship has been registered with Trelasi Security for the purposes of this visit. For the pu purposes, or per for the purpose of this visit, purposes. TSD 26 terminating contact. Okay, so there's a few things in here that's like uh, it's the mentality of the system-wide control. Like, um, I think I think the drone text itself is mostly okay of course the question is would the drone actually have any any power to stop any travelers probably not this is what I mean yeah who, who are Trelasi security Because mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't think the sentry like, I think you're right the sentry wouldn't have any power but it would probably notify mm -hmm. someone or something the... if there was some danger zone shit on the edge of the system yeah the uh, well, uh, okay stretch or, or where the stretch yeah. edge of the system yeah, yeah where yeah. the transit entry uh, point is. again scratch that okay scratch that <laughs> we are we are not at the edge of the system we are nope. not where transit ended. We are somewhere inside the system approaching the planet yeah. uh, that Jewel is, is going to. She's already uh, she's already been uh, awakened uh, and, and ready. So basically <coughs> the role of all sorts of uh, beacons and drones is to uh, is to inform travelers that you are approaching such and such you can start your you, you can start slowing down so it's like yeah. it's it's more like a stop sign or a traffic light than uh, than anything else well and that, that sort of answers the question a little bit so instead of saying outright Trelasi security we could just say local security mm -hmm. uh, so let's let's see Speaking of locals, well, we do know that there is the prison station there. The prison station mm -hmm. is a private thing, yeah. but the private thing still has uh, guards who have a place to flee to, which means they have to uh, answer to a bigger organization. <laughs> they could mm -hmm. there there could be a bigger security slash enforcement corporation. Uh, at the local home worlds who is who maybe has a uh, bigger market share on these jobs or maybe even a monopoly so it it could it could literally be that uh, one security firm or one corporation is running the security in several home worlds in this area mm -hmm. and in that case uh, they might as well be called the trellis security okay so, uh, so I think we 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 could tweak it, but uh, I don't think there's necessarily a problem with this. We we might want to come up with a uh, with a corporation name though. I will add a note here.
The killer second timing that she's been given is 65,000 seconds or 1,083 minutes. Is this long enough, do we think? Could, could you could you do the conversions while I type in the note? Uh, how much does it make in days or hours? Okay. How, how, how much does it do in hours? Oh, in hours, okay. 18 hours. That's too short. Yeah. Because uh, we need to factor in the travel times. Like, mm. like even if she if she were granted uh, some stay time in the station itself, it would be sufficient. But she's not there yet. She's she's only approaching. Just a second. Twenty-seven hours is not enough either. I want to give her about, I don't know, uh, mm, I suppose half a megasec would be... Uh, That's too long, I think. Half a megasecond would be about five to six days, which I think you're right is too long. So maybe about a third of that. Hmm. tangent on the local enforcement still or sort of thinking out loud so uh, I'm thinking that whoever is running the security and enforcement in the local home worlds uh, it might be more than one uh, company but they all might be part of the same franchise or, or same, they, they might sort of link back to the same uh, house and uh, one idea that sort of starts to uh, starts to build up from all this is that the enforcement agencies or the enforcement corporations and organizations sort of recognize each other as uh, you know colleagues Mm -hmm. So when when Jewel uh, registers her seeker status, they say, "Okay, it's 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 okay that you come here. It's okay mm -hmm. that you do your your business." So there would have to be on a larger scale these organizations, these uh, these companies, these security houses will have to have some sort of. Uh, uh, some sort of um, mm, contract system going on b between each other, or like pacts and agreements, and and you know that that sort of thing. Yeah. And uh, that 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 gives more credence to the whole, you know, she's got access to these places and, the, mm -hmm. and all that sort of thing. So yeah, yeah, it yeah. So it's it's not just about uh, her own agency or her her own organization having. Uh, uh, having all the uh, all the keys to different places, it's about different organizations also having some some shares with each other. Yeah. Uh, the other problem that I hope I have resolved: three hundred kiloseconds equals about three and a half days. Yep, that that sounds about right. That gives her gives her time to go in, do some business, get out. Mhm. Mm and it's it's not long enough to set up shop if you were a competing agency who is not in the local market and who you do not want to do stuff there. But it's uh, yeah, it seems reasonable. <laughs> so let me. Uh yeah, it's just 300 kiloseconds, so, I mean, that's pretty easy. 
Let me th write it as numbers. No words, okay. because it's it's like she's listening to the audio. All right. Okay. Uh, also, as as a general rule, I like to write numbers out in text usually. Mostly, <laughs> <laughs> Un unless it's like uh, it's the data node tags and such, like write deep seventy two. <laughs> <laughs> the um, this three hundred kilosecond concession also is for a direct thing to the prison station. If she then goes somewhere from the prison station elsewhere mm -hmm. then th then this restriction no longer applies like like she can go to Trelasi too and everything's sweet do you know what I mean there's mm -hmm. no she hasn't got a time limit on her anymore so I think I think yeah that's we might need to mention that later on or mm -hmm. I will I will make a note all right Of course, if they, if we assume that the sentry bot is actually guarding some sort of perimeter, quote unquote, around the prison station itself, uh, then we might have to shrink this this time after all, because if she's already close enough, uh, it means less travel time. So, so like, 48 to 70 hours would be sort of in the ballpark. But yeah, this let's 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 think about it a little bit. But but basically, I, I think we're mostly in in a good area. It can it can just be. I mean, I'm go, I'm I'm carrying on the point a little bit mm -hmm. here, but. Um, Later on, it could just be as she's leaving the station. Oh no, because we there's there's a reason we end this chapter the way we do when she's going back to Trelasi. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking it could have just been like an offhand sort of she pings the drone to let her know she's continuing her business in the system, but she's away from the red area. Um, but uh, yeah, no, there, there's a reason we're ending the chapter like we have, so there's no place for it. Yeah. So so basically this this drone it it pretty much is like a walk, uh, like a talking traffic sign. Mm -hmm. You are you are entering this zone. Uh need clearance something yeah. something. And and uh, if clearance is not given or like if if you if you do not if you do not belong into one of those who would be given clearance, then the drone would notify some sort of yeah. troll thingy. Mm -hmm. This it's not just for the security either. I mean, there's a there's an element of the safety of visitors to the system as well. Well, like this, well yeah. Mm, this thing doesn't want just like civilians and tourists coming into these dangerous locations. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> But yeah, I am with you 100%. So basically, the the text probably needs some tweaking to make sure that these points sort of come out of it. But let's see. Yeah. Okay. So um, mention that the time it applies to this system. What was the oh, other mate. idea?
spot on. Yeah, so all this is sort of like background info that I will try to work into the into the drone's message. And um, this info should actually come from the drone. Ah, ah, it does. Okay, never mind. I will note it down anyway. So again, we can imagine that, let's say, the prison station is here the space around the prison station is sort of peppered with these perimeter drones mm -hmm. who, who com communicate with each other and 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 communicate with the with the security company uh, who manages the enforcement in the in in these this sector yeah quote air quotes all the way <laughs> And 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 who notify people who get too close. It's basically like the restricted area of wall, just three D. Okay, let's carry on for now. Jewel let out a sigh of relief. One of the benefits of being a seeker was easier access to restricted areas. It didn't always work, and with the seeker's reputation in decline, the clearances weren't as easy to obtain as before. But for now she was in luck. Jewel wasted no time keying in the coordinates for the prison station. She brought the shuttle up to a reasonable speed, then shut off the thrusters and let the autopilot take over. She tried to contact the station itself and got no answer. Her mind drifted into the possible scenarios and speculations. These mostly involved a station full of nothing but dead or starving convicts. Jill frowned. She might not have cared about the well-being of these people, but these people could give her information, the most valuable tool a seeker had. Without it, the trail went cold and targets slipped away. Right, so everything that we have just discussed uh, will have to make its way in here. So point one I wouldn't say that one of the benefits of being a seeker. I would say that that's one of the that's that's kind of the main thing is is that you get uh, you get uh, info. Let me add a note here. Going back even further than that, the whole jewel it out a sigh of relief. Um. I mean, I would, I would want to rework this whole paragraph. Let me start from oh, here. Oh, okay. Yeah. So All it's, right. I, I'm not, I'm not trying to pick on a single sentence or a part of a sentence. I'm picking on the content here. All right. Okay. And and this, uh, this whole, whole thing will go. It, it will not. Uh, I will not want to leave it in the way it is. So, uh, I think uh, the whole seeker's reputation in decline is not a good point. Saw that coming. <laughs> <laughs> and no surprise there. Mm -hmm. So it's it's more about what uh, what a given what the um, uh what the king of a particular hill or the or the, the main the main honcho of a given sandbox decides to share with the others it it comes down to that jewel might have some ideas about uh, seeker's reputation 
but uh, we know that she's very misguided about that to begin with so she she might we might give her some wrong ideas or we might not but i don't want to uh i don't want to make a big point out of this mm -hmm. and also that really sort of knocks onto the next sentence as well yeah and also if if we establish uh, the whole talking traffic signs or like sentry bots as talking traffic signs as uh, as a sort of preliminary perimeter thing she wouldn't have too much time uh, too much uh, to travel so she wouldn't have to put any coordinates in because she would already be near anyway yeah so basically the <laughs> if there are no yeah. coordinates in the computer where's she been going this whole yeah, time yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how did she get there <laughs> <laughs> oh that was fortunate and just where <laughs> i wanted to be how lucky <laughs> yeah <laughs> so so basically the points to to take away from this is that okay points Point one, the local enforcers were okay sharing info with seekers. Yay! <laughs> Not ever. Everybody shares all, all the time. Or not everybody shares everything all the time. Shush. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and. What was the second point? I forgot. Let's let's say she's clear to go to the station. Heads there. At which point she tries to contact it, gets no reply. Yeah. And then thoughts start running through her head about what possibly could have happened. these people are her gateway to info is also relevant yeah also at this point she has no grounds to suspect that fortune is not there so uh, she is going there with the assumption that she would pick him up Mm-hmm. I see. That's that's the thing, yeah. So in the original text, when I wrote this, there was an issue where I knew already what the outcome mm -hmm. of the station was going to be and therefore was unable, almost, to write mm -hmm. a convincing, oh, we're going to be going to pick, you know, mm -hmm. fortune up, but actually... No, what's going to happen is you've got more of a trail to follow yet. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but because I knew what was going on, it was very difficult to write. <laughs> very difficult. Yeah, so actually, uh, actually at this point, uh, these, these people are not even uh, her gateway to the information as far as she knows. That's that's where her target is. Mm -hmm. uh, carry on reading. The computer picked up on the... Yeah. Let's try that again. 
The computer picked up on the station signal and forced... Ah, okay. My brain has done this thing again where... The computer... uh, let, me, let me stop you there. I, I would want to cut the sentence anyway, so... Okay. I'm gonna do it. Oh. I'm gonna fucking make it, man. <laughs> If it's a personal vendetta now. Ah. Game on. Okay. The computer picked up on the station signal and Jewel forced the worry to the back of her mind. Images popped up on the screen. The prison station's external view and a rotating wireframe. Several H-shaped structures linked together to create a modular construct that could be expanded or shrunk depending on the number of inmates. It looked like a giant ladder floating through space with lights running up and down the long edges. Her previous experience told her that each module would be fully equipped with life support, from water treatment to gas processing to food generation. Each block would be self-sufficient. If the new owners knew what they were doing, they could make a comfortable life for themselves almost indefinitely. Right, so I like the imagery, and, uh, and I think uh, the middle part of this could mostly stay the same mm -hmm. but uh, how is okay point one she's already in the area so she doesn't <laughs> need to the computer doesn't need to pick up the signal also she would get the info on this info about the station from a different source again I would I would guess that she she gets she gets a data packet from the drone and that's it yeah. <coughs> so here I would I would uh, describe it more in terms like as as she was drifting towards the station, she was reading up on its uh, on its design, or or mm. like she was doing some homework while while she was approaching. 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 Cultural appro ap approaching. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I, I think all of it, or most of it, probably needs some tightening. But uh, but I think the info itself is okay in this part. So again, I'm gonna leave the actual tightening for another day. But at least we we knew that uh, that it's there. Carry on. Solitaire reached the station, and Jewel typed in several commands designed to unlock the station to law enforcement agencies. Jewel almost laughed in utter disbelief that the convicts hadn't changed the code. She directed Solitaire into the shuttle bay airlock and promptly sealed it behind her. As the chamber pressurized, Solitaire's magnetic drives powered up and it carefully glided into, glided to the inner airlock. Glided? Glid? No, glided is correct! <laughs> wow, okay. The landing bay was almost pitch black, with the exception of a few dim direction lamps. Jewel felt a wave of apprehension. What? Ah. Jewel felt a wave of apprehension wash over her and a renewed sense of determination set in. Stop there or carry on? Uh, stop for a moment. I think okay. the whole uh, let's narrow it down for one fancy word also applies here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, carry on. Okay. The lack of life signs in the bay could mean anything. Her mind outlined a few likely possibilities. The prison dwellers could be caught off guard they might very well be dead, or they might be setting up a trap. In any case, Jewel had the pressing matter of life support to sort out. She tapped at the console, ordering the maintenance routine she had neglected because of her distractions on Rice Star Station. The shuttle settled down on the solid surface and the bayside docking clamps took hold. Solitaire exposed its ports and linked up with the platform's umbilical for a refill. Umbilicals for a refill. Carry on? Yeah, read to the end. Okay. 
Jewel heard the familiar noise of the waste tank being emptied and the sound of the water tank being ref being filled. She removed a panel near the airlock and searched for the water tank connector. There had never been a real need to use it, but she knew where it was. She filled her water bottle and sat for a while, sipping it methodically. She refilled the bottle and placed it in her bag. After a final weapons check, she headed for the airlock. Right. So, again, uh, I, can, I can see some... I would say minor, but still some some world building stuff to sync up with the current state of of stuff. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think once that is uh, that is settled, then the text will just sort of follow. The one sentence that immediately stood out to me was Jewel almost laughed in utter disbelief that the convicts hadn't changed the code. The information's right, but the reaction's wrong. Mm -hmm. So, that, but apart from that, that's... I will keep it blue as an info. And add that. Also, the whole point about uh, Jewel had the pressing matter of life support to sort out. Um, this sort of pops back up out of nowhere, if you know what I mean. So yeah, yeah, I, I noticed that too. It's like um, uh, the whole dehydration thing, it, it sort of went away in the middle. Mm. And uh, so the problem isn't here, the problem is in the previous parts. Okay. Because uh, because the urgency for water is real. We have established it earlier, but uh, it was kind of not there for a while. be honest with you, I don't see Jewel laughing an awful lot at many things. <laughs> and I also don't like the almost laughing. Yeah. Almost did something. And she didn't do it then and there's no point bringing it up, you know, like... Ah... Uh. I've learned so much. Yeah, I think uh, we have overused the word airlock here. She goes to one airlock and then towards the next, although I would say that the different chambers all together make an airlock and then she goes to the solitaire's airlock again, yeah. so it's, it's a little bit much. You could change it for shuttle door. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty... Yeah. yeah. I, had to, I had to look it up. I couldn't help myself. But yes, glided is in fact the past tense for glide, which I don't know. Horrible word. I, I think I think we have to work around it. Mm, yes, definitely. To to make it. I don't care if it's correct. It feels wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one of those things that yeah you can if you have to explain to somebody and look it up that yeah this is indeed the correct one, then uh, then you could be doing something differently. Hmm. Also, one thing that is sort of not clear from this is how does she, like, where does all the info come from? Uh, it's like, uh, maybe add a note that she was keeping an eye or she was looking at the visual feed mm. of, of 
blah blah blah. Because Solitaire doesn't have windows, yo. Yeah. That's the rule. <laughs> Where would you even put the windows there? <laughs> Visual feeds. In the original Nux and Chaos story where they ended up going to the facility, they ended up getting a shuttle called Prancer. Mm -hmm. And as Nux and Chaos are looking around it, Nux goes to the back and he finds the bathroom. And the bathroom's got this massive window looking out into space. So, yes, I think we can put a can in that quite quickly. Or put a pin in that entirely. <laughs> I think I think he said something like, "Oh great, I'm gonna be sucked out into space while I'm having a crap," or something like that. It was something you know, typically uh, not. Banter, funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chaos is roaming around. He's like, "Oh, this place looks shit. It's horrible in mm -hmm. here." And he's like, "Oh, you're gonna hate the bathroom." <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, when it comes to the whole space vessel designs and uh, and no windows yo it's very easy for uh, for an opponent to point out that uh, the the real ships from our time do have windows but then I would argue that uh, okay that be be as it may our time ships are designed to do relatively short trips and not very many times in a row, like mm -hmm. many, many, many shits. Like one use, or I, I don't know how how many uses they're they're expecting to get out of the currently built stuff. But but even then, it's a very different situation. Like yeah. the future sci-fi ships are designed to fly in and out of atmosphere and through great lengths of space over a great duration of time so it's it would be possible to put put a window there somebody <laughs> might want to put a window there but it's it's not very practical is it you can mm -hmm. you you wouldn't like as atomic rockets pointed out what would you even have to look at <laughs> and uh and uh I forgot what point two was. Like yeah, basically it, it wouldn't be you, you could have it but but why? If you want to have a view then it's it's uh it's so much more practical to have cameras and screens and, and zoom and yeah. zoom and enhance. <laughs> <laughs> I much pre that, that's the other thing, yeah. I much prefer the alternative to Windows uh not Linux. I much prefer the alternative to Windows being that it's you know, it's a more technical thing, like a camera that yeah. can zoom and enhance and yeah, block out yeah, certain yeah. things, you know. Yeah, so. because what what would be the purpose of a window on a ship that is designed to go great distances and also withstand the stress of of going in and that in and out of atmosphere many times over why <laughs> <laughs> if it's a space station or a sort of uh, low orbit shuttle that it's a different matter then yeah. then you then you will want to have a view of course But yeah, when when you sort of uh, verbalize the uh, the purpose of building a vessel, then the but why pops up <laughs> almost immediately. <laughs> Where were we even? I lost myself We're in the tangent. We have read to the end of chapter six. Yeah. Okay. So. Here, pressing matter of life support. Hmm. 
<laughs> Hip hop out of nowhere. <laughs> Straight out of nowhere. <laughs> Because yeah, yeah, it does. I I picked this up immediately. Uh, I think part of it is that we uh, we read the beginning of the chapter the other day, and now we jumped right into the drone speak. But even then, yeah, but this this chapter does not have any mention of uh, of her for water shortage. Damn, there's like, there's a lot of... <laughs> St. Francis out of nowhere! <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. The, the, the whole thing needs to be brought up earlier, because she went into cryo, uh, you know, drinking the last dregs of her water, and she's coming Girl. out of cryo. Uh, stasis, sorry, don't hurt me! <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, she she's coming out of, st out of stasis and she is obviously still thirsty, so yeah, we need to bring it up. Yeah. Uh, as and, uh, and another yeah. thing is that she should be... Uh, she should be checking the shuttles... Uh, uh, Essentials? I don't know the the shuttle's <laughs> capability. No, uh, the the shuttle supply early on. Like that would be that would be the first thing. Uh, did we mention it earlier in the previous chapter, chapter five? Might have to wrap this video up in a second because I need to. Use the facilities, my good friend. Facilite. Hmm. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to check the previous chapter for stuff. And then we can wrap it up in, in a minute.